According to a new report from the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, the average university and college tuition fees in Ontario are expected to hit nearly $10,000 by 2016, just a couple of years from now. That means Ontario will have the highest fees in the country, and they've been on the rise for years in 1990 tuition, and fees were less than $3,000 a year. It's a big jump, and there's a call for the government to do something about it. Joining us now from Queen's Park uh, is the chairperson of the Canadian Federation of Students, Alastair Woods. His group represents several student unions across the country. Also, we're joined by Globe and Mail columnist Lorraine Sommerfeld. Alastair, you say the Liberal government's policy of annual tuition fee hikes has eroded the affordability of university education in this province, but enrollment is up, so that means people can and are affording the tuition fees. Yeah, you know, we hear this, uh, this phrase from the government all the time, and I, I like to treat it as a bit of a red herring. It's like saying if you can only afford to take the bus and the bus fares go up, the fact that you're still taking the bus proves that it's not a big deal. In a, in a province where 75% of newly posted jobs require you complete college and university education, it's now more than ever a necessity. The second part I want to add on that uh, is in a study released in 2011 by the Higher Education Quality Council of Ontario, which is actually an arm's length research body of the government, they found that from 2002 to 2007, the vast majority of enrollment growth in post-secondary institutions came from those from the uh, upper income quartile, while those in the lowest income quartile actually lost ground over those five years. Hmm. Okay, Lorraine, let me ask you, according to the report from the Canadian Centre of Alternatives in Ontario, the government provides about 46% of university operating funding, while students provide 41%, although that doesn't add up to 100. Anyway, uh, the government is kicking in a fairly big amount, and obviously that means the taxpayers already think that we need to be contributing more. I think part of the problem is that 41% that we say con students are contributing, they're not really. They're taking it on as debt, and you know... When you're younger, you look at it and go, oh, four years, five years, that's a million, a million years away. So they sign up for something. A lot of times, I don't think they quite understand just what it is they're signing up for. And that unknown is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, Alistair, let's talk about uh, affordable tuition fees. I think you'll probably admit that. I mean, for anyone, whether it's the, the student uh, helping uh, pay for some of the uh, costs or the parents, it's an expensive proposition to send uh, a youngster to, uh, to college or university. And it's something that has to be thought of before you actually enroll the child. Uh, and I'm wondering if today there are more families out there that have started saving earlier for their children's education. And maybe there are more students out there who know that they need a summer job ahead of time in order to contribute to that education. Are you finding that? Or is it still extremely difficult, even with a job in the summer, to make ends meet in school? It is extremely difficult for students today to actually make ends meet. It used to be that you could work uh, about uh, I believe it was six weeks over the summer at minimum wage full time to actually afford tuition fees maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Today you could work a whole year on minimum wage full time and you still wouldn't be able to have enough money to afford just the base cost of your tuition fees. Today Stats Canada out with a report that showed that Ontario for the fifth year in a row has the highest tuition fees in all of Canada. And so more than ever students and their families are continuing to struggle to make ends meet under this mounting financial pressure. Uh, Lorraine, if the government subsidizes the entire post-secondary experience, won't we end up in the similar situation that we have with public schools or health care, where we end up being the customer is getting the short end of the stick. Uh, you know, uh, we wait in line for a doctor, we don't get a specialist for months, and we have to deal with what goes on in public school uh, and just sort of bide, shut our mouths and let the teachers deal with no. everything. Do you think we're going to lose some of the quality that we get when we pay for our education? No one's looking for the government to subsidize all of it. That's not the point. But as well, Alistair 46 said... Well, 46% is a whole lot. I mean, yeah, how I much know, more is not a lot of it? Did you hear what Alistair just said? I used to make 5 bucks an hour and my tuition was 1500 bucks, so I could do it. Now minimum is about 10 bucks an hour and tuition is 8500 at university level. I, I believe there's a lot of towns with great, like Guelph and, I mean, Mac right here in Hamilton, there's Mohawk. There's a lot of, you should stay home, frankly. You've got to start looking for ways to save money yourself. The yeah. onus is not on the government, all of it. But parents should hopefully save sooner. That could be tough in some families. Kids, ha kids have to work too bad, get out and work. Stay home. That's the biggest thing. If you, I've got one at home. I've got one that's not at home because of the program. But kids, 
you have to be creative and you have to look. Everyone wants to run away from home and go stay at school. Well, it's the experience that they it, want, which they costs do. money. They want the experience so, and that cost. So I want to parse down what's the education and what's that you know, magical, lyrical experience, and not all of you get to have it. So I think people have to be realistic, but we also need more help when it's out of the grasp of almost everyone, unless you're already a one percenter. If that's where we're headed, that's not fair. Alistair, let's talk about Ontario versus, uh, say, Quebec. Uh, if I wanted to send my kid to uh, Mac or U of T and found out it was too expensive, how much is it going? How much less would it cost me if they wanted to go to McGill or Concordia? Well, uh, in Quebec, uh, they have uh, some of the lowest tuition fees in the country. I believe this year, Newfoundland and Labrador uh, tops the, the cake for the lowest, but they're both around the same, which is about $2,500 uh, per year. Uh, That's for, it? Uh, $2,500 for tuition? Yes. Wow, versus 8500 that Lorraine was talking about. I got yeah. more kids on their way. Well, guess what? They're going to McGill or Concordia then, I guess. <laughs> that must be awfully difficult. I mean, I would think it would be more difficult for the Ontario universities to draw students if, uh, unless they were living at home, versus going to, uh, you know, going to the province of Quebec. Well, I mean, there, there are many students who choose to study out of province because of the prohibitive uh, cost. Even if you were an out of province student uh, in Quebec, uh, it still does cost significantly cheaper to go to school if you came from Ontario and moved to Montreal or, or Quebec City to go to school there. Um, but I also think that uh, the government is trying to, you know, incentivize students to go to school by encouraging them to take on more and more debt and also kind of offering up these, these grants and discounts that you can apply for. And so, in essence, they're, they're treating higher education as an episode of extreme couponing, where students can apply for any number of, of discounts or loans or interest relief, when really the solution should be simple. Increase funding above the national average and have a real long-term strategy to reduce tuition fees. Okay, Alistair, I want to ask you something. I know there's a fair amount of students that take that BAP or where they, uh, they finish grade 12, they travel for a year, they take a year off, they do whatever, because you're pretty young when you graduate from high school. And depending when you're born, you can be really young. What's wrong with taking that year and working at a full-time job and saving up enough for your tuition so you, you understand the value of the education because you're paying for it? Well, you know, uh, students already do that. Many students already delay entry into higher education because they're nervous that they're not going to be able to afford it. And many more students actually take years off during their college or university education because they can't keep up with the costs. The issue is that uh, tuition fees have risen at three times the rate of inflation, uh, and the employment situation for students, whether they're in college or university or not in college or university, is quite dismal right now. And so students are finding it difficult to, to get those jobs, to be able to get the money to pay for these exorbitant high tuition fees. We need more kids in the trades. We have to start opening up the doors to things and opening up minds to consider other things because a university degree or a diploma doesn't get you a job anymore. Uh, sad but true. You're right. Uh, Lorraine Sommerfeld, uh, Alistair Woods, thank you both for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sun, rain, and snow. How much or how little can we expect to get? I know it isn't even autumn yet, but are you ready for winter? And how much snow will we get? And when will it come? All those questions will be asked and answered after this.